This is Nate with Landmark Implement, and today I'll be going over John Deere planners equipped with Seedstar 3 systems. We'll talk about some of the different items on the screen and the various icons and what they mean. We'll go through the planner setup and configuration options, seed and crop changeover options, some of the totals uh, and calculators that we have. We'll talk about the available diagnostics through the Seedstar 3 controller and then also the meter runoff procedures that we can do. Starting with the planner configuration and setup, we'll jump into soft key I. Generally, a lot of the initial configuration, once it's been entered, does not have to be altered. However, there are some items under the other tabs at the top that we can go in and change occasionally or look at before season. One of those being underneath the sensor tab, if we pull this up, starting with our height switches. It's a good idea to reset and recalculate our height switches before the season starts. This is ensuring that all your wiring is good going to the planar height switch as well as the height switch itself. We can go into this calibration by pressing the down arrow and then following the instructions on the page to fully raise the planner, select enter. Next we'll lower the planner down all the way to the lowest position, hit enter, and then that will calibrate it. If we get a warning like we do here now, uh, that's basically telling us that we have an issue with the sensor or wiring. In this case, in the simulator, there's no planner moving, which is why we're getting the error. We also have the option in here to set our stop, starting and stop recording heights. We can raise the planner to that current position and hit this up arrow, which will then uh, record the position of the planner to start and stop logging. The next item down on our sensor list that we should check is our tractor speed. Most scenarios, we're going to leave this speed source on auto. This is going to allow the, the planner speed source to come off of radar speed or GPS speed, depending on how the tractor is set up. You can come in and manually enter a speed or go off of um, a ground speed indicator. Uh, but in most scenarios, this is going to be left in an auto mode. The next item that we'll talk about um, is going to be our pneumatic downforce air pressure. It's a good idea to relieve all the pressure off the system and zero out these sensors prior to starting, so that, that way we have a good reference to zero. If we're seeing with everything drained off that we're showing anything else other than zero, uh, we'll definitely want to go ahead and recalibrate those sensors to bring them back to a zero starting point. The next one we'll talk about is a gauge wheel downforce sensors. Again, this will be the same type of calibration um, with the planter up in the air and nothing being pressed against the gauge wheels. We'll go ahead and use this right arrow with the zero to zero out all those way pins that are back on our three rows. The next item that we'll look at here under the sensors is our vacuum sensors. With all the vacuums off, um, we wanna make sure that these sensors are showing a reading of zero. Again, anything other than zero with the vacs off is not gonna be good, so we wanna make sure that we get those zeroed out properly. By using the right arrow, we'll get another option here where it tells us basically to make sure we have no vacuum um, pressure running. We'll use the right arrow with a zero and zero those out again. After calibrating any of these, if we see any other reading other than zero start to climb up, that would be a good indicator that we would likely have a faulty sensor or an issue possibly with some wiring. The next thing we'll go over in our sensor list is our ride quality sensors. If we know that we're having an issue, an issue with one of the sensors in the middle of the field, we can come in here and disable that particular row so that we're able to keep running until we can get a replacement part. Once we select the row that has the faulty sensor, we can go ahead and uncheck that sensor, which will disable it. Once that sensor is replaced, we can come back here and re-enable that sensor again. So it's um, also taking readings. Last one on the list is our row unit speed. By default, these should be on. Uh, this is going to go ahead and account for our curve compensation on a 5E or exact merge planner. Next tab at the top is our drive motors. Again, this is something that should have been set up initially when the planner was originally configured and generally will not have to be altered. So now that our configuration has been completely set up, we'll switch over to our seed setup, soft key G. In here, we'll want to go ahead and enter in our crop names if they've not been entered in yet. 
or select the, the crop type that you'd like to change over to. Once that crop type has been put in, the next thing we'll need to do is go ahead and tell it what type of seed plates that we're running, which should then fill out our seeds per disc on that plate. And we'll want to select our rates tab to enter in our default rates to jump to. We can also, if we have a prescription, turn on rate number six and enable it to run those prescriptions as we cycle through our list that we'll see here in a little bit. The next thing we'll talk about is our planner totals and our calculators that we have. By selecting soft key H and our totals icon, we'll be able to see some of the total calculators that have been adding up. These can be reset or changed um, for our number one and number two total counter. And then our third counter down here in the bottom that shows a right arrow to a zero is designed to count down. So if we know that we have a 120 acre field, we can enter that in. And as we go through and plan the field, this will continue to count all the way back down to zero. So we know we should have the whole field covered by the time this hits zero. And then lastly, we'll have a running average of seeds per acre down here in the bottom for the planner in total. And this can be reset anytime by using the right arrow with the zero next to it. On the right hand side, these will be our lifetime totals of hours and acres covered with the planner. Next, we'll talk about the planner diagnostics by selecting the book with a wrench, soft key J on the lower right hand side. What this will show us is our current software version. Of course, this being a simulator, we're not going to see anything showed up in there. Uh, but we do have some other items on this drop down list that we can look into to help us diagnose some issues possibly on the planner. It allows us to look at our system voltages some of our vacuum sensor readings that we're seeing, if we have a good speed source, our gauge wheel downforce sensors, our pneumatic downforce system, if we have any fertilizer system configured that'll show up under this list, our air compressor, our current row unit speed, and for turn compensation, our planner yaw. The next tab up here is our system data, and this helps us break down pretty much everything on the planner that we're gonna see. We'll also talk about this a little bit further once we get into the overall planner run page. Now that we're in the planner diagnostics, we do see some of the icons change on the right-hand side and a few of the other icons that went away. We do have the option, once we're in diagnostics, to do an entire planner runoff. This gives us the ability to clean out the planner completely if we're doing a crop or a variety changeover. We can also come down to an individual row unit runoff if we would like to perform a test on an individual meter to help tune that meter in or diagnose some issues with that particular row unit. From here, we'll transition back to the main planner run page and talk through all the different items on here. You'll notice that some of these items will not be available once the planner is down and running or we have speed. One of the first things to note is our planner status icon. This is a good way to help diagnose potential issues on the planner, whether it be a faulty height switch or speed source. So the first icon we'll see here in the upper left-hand corner is a current status. We'll see this in two areas, one for the pneumatic downforce system and then one for the planner variable rate drive system showing up. So the first icon filled in shows that those two systems are okay. We'll transition over and lower the planner down and we'll see a couple things happen. When the planner is down and that voltage is received by the controller, we'll see the bottom of that triangle icon filled out and then we've seen the fast start icon show up on the screen. If we start to drive forward with the planner and simulate that, we're going to see that last box fill out and then these icons will turn green. This one down here at the bottom is showing that all of our drive units are spinning and the planner should be planning. Up here at the top we'll see our active pneumatic downforce system should be operating completely. We've seen some of our planner at the glance menus start to level off and look good as we simulate driving through the field. In our upper left-hand corner, this box indicates our 
current target rate that we're intending to apply. By pushing on this box, our planner will cycle over between the predefined rates that we have turned on. If we have more than two rates set up ahead of time in our seed setup page, we'll get another icon where we can go and, and pick from any of the six different rates that we have on there. The next box over here on the right, this is our active pneumatic downforce system. We can see our current margin that we have in there of 100 pounds and how we're actually running. If we push on this box, we'll get another page where we can increase or decrease our target margin. And then we'll see that change happen over on the right hand side as that change is applied. Using the back arrow will bring us back to our normal default run page. Next down on the list is our planner at the glance again. The first box is showing our seeding population being shown live. We can see that overall average number change up and down along with the bar graphs representing each row. Any bar graph that starts to change color in orange indicates that we're starting to get close to a threshold to be off of our target range for that particular row unit. If we see a row unit turn red, like we do here, that's showing that that drive unit is off. So what I've done is I've used these arrows at the bottom to disable a couple of row units manually. I can use the arrows to turn them back on, or I can use the enable all sections to turn them all on at once. So once we did that, we've seen some of these boxes change colors. Again, this is a warning to show you that something is off of the target rate and close to the alarm level. Down here in the bottom, with our seeding population selected, our planner at a glance is showing uh, some of our row units that are at the minimum rate or the lowest rate of all of them. We also see the row unit that is performing at a maximum rate. And then our last box over here is scanning through all the row units and giving you an idea of how that row unit is performing. You do also have the option to manually select a row unit if you believe that you've got a row unit that's giving you some grief. You can come down here and enter that row unit number in, and this will help you keep an eye on it as you travel through the field. Next box up here is going to be our planner singulation. Again, this would be a bar graph being shown if we seen that the graph was raising up above the center of the line, that would indicate that we're having more doubles coming off the planner. And then if we see those bar graphs start to drag down, that's indicating that we've got a skip that has happened in that particular row unit. We'll see the same type of information down here at the bottom below our bar graph. So we're seeing our overall singulation number being shown. Again, we'll get our row units that are performing at a higher level of skips, and then also for our row unit that is having more multiples than the rest. Those will be highlighted down here. The next item over is our coefficient of variation. This is a representation of planner spacing performance. This number is represented in such a way that uh, the lower the number that we have displayed here, the better performing the planner is. A typical number that we'll see in here would be a 0.10 to a 0 0.30. The higher that this number goes, again, the poorer performance that we have out of that planner. And there will be a number of things that affect our overall spacing from seed size to population and a number of other field conditions. Our next item over is going to be our planner downforce. This will show the readings on the row units that are equipped with our weigh pin sensors. And this will show you where they're performing in relation to the target rate that we have applied. So in this scenario, we have a target margin of 60 pounds. And we're showing off these bars are a little high at 67. Down at the bottom, again, we have this graph that's showing the row units that are performing at the lowest level and then at the highest level in relation to our overall target that we're shooting for. While our icons on the left here are showing our downforce margin, which is our extra weight on the row unit, over on the right, our total downforce of applied weight will be shown here. 
Lastly, we do have our live tank pressure reading, which would help us keep an eye if we are running low on pressure or would possibly have a leak in the tank. Our next tab here will be our ride quality indicators. Overall, we would like to see these graphs topped out high all the time and perfect ride quality being at 100%. This is something good to use as an indicator of whether you should speed up or slow down. We could always increase all of the downforce that we have on the row unit and push down hard on the row units, which would give us an overall better ride quality. However, that would leave us with a bunch of sidewall compaction. So ideally, we want to adjust our downforce so we have adequate downforce with no sidewall compaction and still maintaining a good ride quality in that row unit. We can cycle through our ride quality and also ground contact. Again, uh, the perfect target on these would be at 100%. With the planter being simulated moving, we do see some of these icons down here at the bottom change. We do have the option to use this pause symbol, which will pause our downforce system if we know that we're going through a draw or a muddier area of the field and we don't want the downforce system to try to chase after that, we can temporarily pause that system. It'll give us a 10 second counter to count down where it will not make any active changes until this resumes from that countdown. Now that that countdown is ended, the system is fully resumed in an automatic mode. In the lower left-hand corner, we do have our planner and row unit details page. This allows us to dive into all of the information that we've seen from the planner at a glance page on one particular row unit. So we can see all of that information that's being shown off of that one row unit in one area. We can use the back arrow to get back to our default run page. And over here on the right hand side, we have a couple icons that we can change and edit depending on our preferences. This is where we can select our acre counters for our totals or if we want to have our acre counter that counts back down to zero, or our vacuum information. The last setup item that we can adjust is using this up arrow with the dot in the lower left-hand corner. There are a few settings in here that we would recommend. Generally, most growers would want to enable the fast start on the planter down. What this does is if a grower happens to stop in the middle of the field and leaves the planter down on the ground, then pressing the fast restart icon and taking off will prevent them from having to lift the planter up, backing up, and taking off again to prevent any skips in the field. This can also be used on the end of the field when the planter first goes down. It's going to turn our variable rate drives faster than the very slow speed that we're traveling when we first take off until that override speed is taking over. We can also adjust our target increments from when we push our downforce targets up or down, our active downforce pause timer that we selected earlier. We can set the duration of that time for each time that we hit that pause button. And then we can enable or disable the active downforce system with this checkbox. The next tab is our alarms and limits. The planner will be loaded with all the defaults, but these can be altered by the grower if they choose to have a tighter, tighter or wider tolerance with those alarms. 